if you are in a place where it is safe, appropriate, and comfortable for you to do so, please close your eyes and begin to take some nice, long, slow, deep, relaxing breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. With every inhale, feel more light and peace entering your body and mind. With every exhale, feel like you are able to let go of all tension from your body along with anything that you do not want from your mind. Inhaling peace and exhaling as you let go. We picture ourselves on top of a beautiful mountain in the center of a circular grove of trees. In the center of our circle, a bonfire blazes forth lighting us and the grove up with a sacred golden light. We recognize that this is the light of perfect love and perfect trust, and it easily and effortlessly burns away everything that is unlike itself, leaving us safe and serene. Into this space, we invoke the presence of our Creator. To many of us, our Creator reveals themselves to be a mother and father, a god and goddess. Into the sacred space, we also invite the presence of our guides, our angels, and our teachers. We ask that we be guided as we walk upon the way, becoming happier, wiser, more magical, more prosperous, and more loving people. Thank you very much. Blessed be. It is said that everybody comes into this world with nothing and leaves this world with nothing. You come to this world with no possessions, and you leave this world with no possessions. As a soul journeying in this world, you are here with nothing. Now, that's not accurate. You come to this world with everything, and you leave this world with everything, because you're not coming to the world and leaving the world. That's just what it appears to be. It looks like this body, this personality is you, and that without this body and this personality, you have nothing. So that is what the ego wants us to believe. It wants us to believe that this incarnation is it. This is you. There's no more. And the ego loves that you come into this world with nothing and you leave with nothing. Because then it can convince you that while you're here, you better get a lot of stuff. While you're here, you better get tons of stuff. Because time's a-wasting. Your body's getting older. Nobody's getting younger. This world is a dangerous place, it says. And you better get busy protecting yourself and amassing some sort of wealth for yourself, some things for yourself that you can use to protect yourself so that you can be somewhat safe here. But eventually you're going to die anyway. So that's a really awful way of looking at things. It's just hideous, but it's what we do. It's the point of view from which we start everything. And everything that we experience in this world is colored by that idea. And that's the ego in a nutshell. The ego is a habit of thinking from the perspective of lack. The ego's point of view is always what is not. The ego is developed out of the idea of not. The ego says when you perceive something in this world, you can only perceive it based upon what it is not. If you look at a table, the reason why you see the structure of that table there is because of the fact that it's not everything else but the table. It's the idea of negative space, that there's nothingness that is appearing as somethingness. But the only way that it can appear as something is because it's not everything else. And I don't want to go too far into that. But just understand that that's the ego's point of view. It's based on what is not there. It's based upon what is lacking. So whatever you are looking upon in the world, being informed by the ego mind, understand that the ego mind is there to remind you no matter what 
that you're starting with a lack, that there must be some gap that must be filled. We believe that we are coming into this world with nothing. But if we listen to the voice of the spirit rather than of the ego, the spirit says, that's a lie. You don't really come into this world at all. You are eternal. You are an eternal being that lacks nothing because the concept of lack doesn't exist in reality. It only exists in this world that the ego is projecting for us. And we understand what magic is, right? We understand that magic is the idea that that we can, under our own will, cause change to occur. And we cause change to occur according to our will based on how we are directing our thought substance, right? It's through our directed thinking that we change things and create things. Well, the ego knows this. The ego's not stupid. The the ego understands this just because it's part of our mind. It's a sick part of our mind, but it's still a part of our mind nonetheless. And everybody creates magically, not just people that are adept at it, that know how to do it on purpose. Everybody creates magically. It's just the way we are. It's how we were created. We are projectors. Infinite intelligence is a projector. Infinite intelligence projected you. It is projecting you. But when infinite intelligence projects something, it projects it as truth. And so it's not an image. It's the projection of reality. Whereas what we do, when we start using our minds as projectors, and we start projecting things that aren't true, then we project images. We project fantasies. We project what we call illusions. That doesn't mean that they're not real for us in experience. Absolutely, they're real. But From the perspective of infinite intelligence, they're not real because they're not based in fact. They're based on projecting ideas of lack. So the whole idea of this world that we understand anyway is a projection of lack. And so our premise from the gate is, what do I do to make myself safe here in this world of lack? Well, by getting things by hoarding things, by taking things. Fill up the gap, fill up the gap, fill up the gap. And some people seem to fill up the gap really well, and they amass large amounts of stuff, including money, and other people don't seem to be as good at it. But neither one are happy. They're all just coming from a wrong perspective. Some people know how to play the game better than others do, but the game itself is a game of stress. The game itself is a game of illusion. And it's really just doubling down on tragedy. Infinite intelligence doesn't create tragedy. We're not here to be tragic beings. But the ego trades in tragedy because it's the only thing it can do. Tragedy is the way that we are able to prove without a shadow of doubt that this world is not safe. We are alone. We are separate. Nothing good can ever happen for us. The best we can accomplish is maybe 70 to 100 years worth of not so bad. (laughs) It's just a horrible way of thinking. It's just a horrible mindset. And it's no wonder that things don't seem to get better here, but seem to get worse. Because that's the progressive nature of our minds. We can't help the fact that our minds expand. We can't help the fact that we progress it because that's how we were created. We were created as expansive, progressive beings. And so when we're misusing the powers of our magic on ourselves and on each other here to create all kinds of proof that we are unsafe and that we are lacking, it just seems like it just compounds and compounds and compounds. And so we never seem to be able to do anything except for, if we're lucky, tread water. But even that doesn't work because you're still getting older. You're still marching toward the grave. We don't question the fact that every single thing that we come in contact with here is based on what we don't have or what is not there is based upon lack, lack, lack. Even if you get something nice, what's the first thing you start to worry about? Losing it. Until we can understand that there is a definite trend towards poverty in the mindset of the ego, we can't ever understand where to find prosperity. 
It's outside of the thought system completely and utterly. When we project images onto the screen of space, we interact with those images as if they are real because they seem very real. And it takes a lot of gumption. It takes a lot of courage to look at this world and say, I don't think so. Maybe not. But that's what every magus throughout history, whether they called themselves that or not, has done. They've looked at the world as it was presented to them and said, I don't think so. I know this isn't real. There is a real world beyond these illusions that we're creating here. And that's the world of abundance. And occasionally, you get some people that seem to be in this world, but they're really not. They seem to be able to manifest in ways that are otherworldly, that seem to be able to sort of skate through the illusion without getting pulled into the illusion. They seem to be able to get their needs met here without a lot of problem and without a lot of attachment. Now, those people are not as abundantly apparent to us as the ones that are in the boat of poverty and lack, but they do exist. And you can become one of them. You can become one of them by learning. There are two distinct voices. We talked about this several times, but let's just reiterate that. There are two distinct voices in our minds. One of those voices is our intuitive power that's, that is always and has always been and always will be connected straight to spirit, connected straight to our source. And in reality, it's just your mind at its sanest. It's the you that you were created to be. It's your soul speaking to, to your personality and guiding your personality back to reality, back to sanity. But then there's the other voice. There's the other voice. That's what we would call the voice of your ego or the voice of your habitual mind. Its only function is to reinforce the illusions that it has established already. And that voice is working just as hard as the other voice. And it's up to us to decide which voice we're listening to because you can't listen to them both at the same time. And when you listen to one voice, the world that you experience starts to change to accommodate the projections of that voice. When you start listening to your intuitive voice, your guide, your inner guidance to see things in a different way, then you start to experience the world as infinite intelligence created it for you. When you listen to the voice of your ego, you start to experience a world That is the projection of those fearful and lacking thoughts. The difficulty that we come up against in listening to our soul, to listening to our inner guidance over the ego, is that there's not a lot of support for that here in this world. Very few people are listening to their souls, even if they play lip service to it. So we have a lot of support for listening to the voice of lack. We have a lot of support for listening to the voice of poverty here. And very little support, even from the people that talk about prosperity and and spirit and all that stuff. Very little support listening to the voice for spirit, wherein we can actually access our abundance. When you live in this world and you see it from the eyes of spirit rather than the eyes of the ego, the world changes. That's not to say that you're not still here in this world with the rest of us. But you, but you don't see it in the same way. When you're not seeing it from the eyes of, of lack, then abundance is just a, a given. You need something, it's given to you. You need supply, it is given to you. You need a resource, it's given to you. You manifest it, it happens. And it's not a big deal. When we start to even contemplate that kind of thing, the ego gets very upset and really doubles down on poverty. And other people's egos double down on poverty, too. You're not going to get a lot of support for that idea. People don't like it. People don't want you to have things easy here. People don't want you to be abundant here. It makes them very upset when you're abundant and you have things easily and things work out for you. Because we have this idea that everybody's invested so much time in 
that you have to work so hard and maybe you'll get a little bit of reward and maybe you won't, but at least you worked hard. But you see, from the point of view of spirit, working hard is not working at all. Working hard is play. Working hard feels good. Working hard is fun because it's not hard work because you're doing what you're here to do. All of the wonderful inventions and the wonderful philosophies and the scientific breakthroughs, all of that comes from a soul that says, I I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. I love my work. I love what I'm doing. I can't do anything but this. People connected to their souls, connected to the realm of abundance that is the truth, they don't want to stop working. You don't have to worry that you're going to become lazy. A lot of people think, well, what are we going to do? Just visualize and eat bonbons all day? Probably not. Most souls have very important work to do. But you see, in this world, we say your work creates your wealth. But in the world of spirit, your work is your wealth. The way you express yourself in this world is your wealth. And that your wealth is given to you. You came in with it. No one can take that away from you. There is all abundance for you. From the point of view of spirit, you don't have to get anything. You just have to realize the things. You don't have to go and figure stuff out. You just have to realize them. You don't have to have a a, a whole program of getting and maintaining wealth. You have to realize the wealth as it's necessary for you. That's not so that you have some sort of legacy that you can leave when you die. It's the way everybody's set up to be here. And see, once we start recognizing that, and once we start really living through the eyes of spirit and manifesting as spirit and allowing our needs to be met, what we're doing is not only getting our needs met, which is awesome, but we are even subtly providing an example for other people to do that as well. And that's how people wake up, by watching other people wake up. That's the thing that really bugged me for the longest time. When will I wake up? When will I wake up? Why can't I just have everything be the way I want it to be now? And my inner guide said, yeah, why not? (laughs) Why not? What do you really think that you need to go get that's going to be better than everything that you already have, that infinite spirit has already granted you, has already given you? So I remember I had a real problem with some bills and I was really just at my wits end. I don't know what to do about these bills. And I remember thinking to myself, well, you know, you got to go in, talk to your inner guide, see what they say. I was expecting, you know, some money spells or something like that. And the guide's perspective to me was, why don't you just allow yourself to accept the abundance that you are already granted? Why do you go through this? Why can't you see the truth instead of uh, trying to manipulate your way through your life? Why can't you just live as a soul? Why is it so difficult for you to understand that infinite intelligence already gave you everything you need to pay this bill and that this bill is nothing? This bill is nothing. Well, at the time when I got that, it was really annoying, but As I started to contemplate that, I recognized that it was true, that as I was upset about the bill and thinking about all of the lack and how I don't have what it takes to pay the bill and how the bill was so important and that there seemed to be no resources for me to experience the payment of that bill, that was my movie. That was where I was spending all my time. Churn, 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 churn. Bill, 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 bill. Lack, 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 lack. Poverty, 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 poverty. The whole time trying to figure out, well, what can I do to get the prosperity that I need? So my inner guidance was, you see where your error is, right? You see that your need for that new money spell is the problem. You don't need anything. The only spell that might be helpful to you right now is the spell to wake up to the fact that you already have the abundance that you need. If you can just change your mindset, I gave myself more time to sit and contemplate the abundance that I already am, not the abundance that I have to get, not the abundance that I have to, I have to go manifest, 
but the abundance that I already am. I was given all abundance at my creation. Nothing's changed other than my thinking. Well, you know what happened, right? The bill was paid easily, effortlessly, with no problems. Why? Because I realized the truth. And then the projective nature of my mind was able to start projecting truth onto that situation rather than doubling down on the horror film about that bill. You were not left here unattended, but what you were is conned by the ego mind and everybody else's ego mind into thinking you don't have enough. You were conned into thinking that this is a world of lack. You were conned into thinking that you have to go get something because you are missing something. Once you realize that it's a big con job that you yourself have been running on yourself and everybody's conspiring in that with one another, once you realize that, it's not that big of a trip to abundance because you realize that you don't have to do anything except for accept it. The only doing that is helpful is sitting and accepting the truth sitting and realizing the truth, sitting and feeling and being one with the soul that already has it. Now, that sounds really difficult to a lot of people when they hear that. I don't know. I need something else. I need something to do. I need the candle. I need the incense. And that's fine. You can do all of those things. They do help. They do help because they give you something to focus on. They do help because they do align you with correspondences. They do help. But you understand that if they're going to work, those tools are just there to help you focus your mind back on the truth, that you don't need anything, that you aren't lacking anything. And the idea that you're lacking something is why you're experiencing lack. Once you recognize, I have all abundance within me because that's my inheritance, things change. Knowing that that's true Sometimes it's hard at first, but you just do it step by step, little by little. And sometimes we even say, fake it till you make it. Act as if. What if I had everything? What if all my needs were met? What would it feel like? How would I know? What would that be? That's such a great use of your powers of conjuring, is to conjure this experience of what If I knew everything was working out for me in beautiful ways and that I didn't lack a thing and that I didn't have to go out and get anything and that everything was able to to manifest for me in easy, wonderful ways for the highest good of all and that all my needs were met at every moment of time and point of space and that I am safe and I'm protected and I'm living in the bosom of infinite intelligence right now, and nothing can harm me. What if I knew that that was true? How would my life be different? What a wonderful way to contemplate things. What a wonderful use of your time here on earth, spending a few moments every day thinking along those lines of just what if? What would that be like? Wouldn't it be wonderful if... So you don't have to be a master of all of this to think about that, to daydream about those things, to think along those lines. Because what you're doing is you're just shifting your awareness from the world of lack, ego, horror film, tragedy, death, into truth and soul and spirit and abundance and eternity and truth about you. As a soul, unique, wonderful, lovely soul that is so beloved, so beloved by your creator. And you've never been apart from them. You've never been apart from your creator. And your creator can reveal themselves in any possible way that makes you feel wonderful. Nobody gets to be in in, in the middle of that. No religious leader, no spiritual leader, no author, nobody gets to get between you and your creator. Just you and your creator. In your own inner guidance. Showing you, guiding you gently 
into that truth about who you are as a soul, always abundant, always cared for, all good is yours. Just allowing yourself to realize that it's up to you how you use your mind. And if you're feeling lack, if you're experiencing lack in any way, it doesn't have to be financial lack, any kind of lack, you just know automatically, oh, that's ego. Ego's lack. Spirit doesn't have lack. I can change the way I'm using my mind. I can change the way I'm using my time when I'm sitting and contemplating things. Rather than going over and over and over about how everything isn't working, I can start thinking about how well I'm cared for and how abundant I am and how everything is working out for me in such miraculous, magical, wonderful ways. Isn't it awesome? Then you just watch things change. You watch things change before you. Because you've made the choice. You've had the gumption to change your thinking. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be.